My online community of believers in Christ are torn between two sides of an issue with extreme significance. I believe we're at the center of an issue that could only be maybe a small handful of people, maybe in the whole world, that are studying this. And I have to ask myself, what would Yeshua tell us to do? And what verses in scripture first led us to this? And what verses in scripture do we say support this? And is it possible we need to move slowly in prayer and maybe get some fresh eyes on this and do what God told us to do with everything? Test it by the word of God. I read in Acts 13 of a gathering of godly men in Antioch. They were out going to send out some young ministers to establish churches and preach the gospel to a darkened world. How does God go about building churches? How does the Holy Ghost work? Scripture said they gathered and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. This was their planning session. Worship. Fasting, waiting on the Lord for direction till the Holy Ghost comes and tells them exactly what to do. Number two, they prayed. No strategizing, no networking. No one made a step until the Holy Ghost said, this is the way, walk in it. And then when the Holy Ghost spoke, they laid hands on them and sent them out. The Bible says, under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shalom Aleyhem. I bring peace to the entire community. And I love you all. I just want to be clear before we begin that this is this message is not a rebuke to anyone. There's no man or woman among us that doesn't have a couple few blind spots. In 1 John 4 verses 2 to 3, we learn how God teaches us how we can test if a man has in them the Spirit of God. And it reads, By this you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. When I look to the online community and I see people who, while believing in many truths, they look to find their answers in the world and not in the Word of God. When I see this, I have to pause. When I see so-called cultural icons and influencers who love to talk about the Word or theology, but they're void of any actual talk of the Word, I have to pause. Imagine a man who doesn't profess a sincere belief and understanding of the Gospel of Christ Jesus, but he has a message for the church. Let's watch a textbook example of how a public figure virtue signals for the sheep. I mean, I think a lot, I think of religious matters a lot. I would consider myself a rel deeply religious person. Um, I would say, and I have said this before, that I act as if God exists and that I'm terrified that he might. <laughs> and, but I don't consider... Here we have a man who in his assumed reverence for the quote-unquote Christian experience has dedicated himself to educating us. Let's call it edutainment for lack of better words. Because of its great entertainment value. How fortunate we are to have him provide a lesson while brightening our day with his psychological evaluations of God and all things biblical. I liken it to visitors at a zoo tossing peanuts to an elephant. Thank you, Mr. Peterson, for feeding our spiritual growth. The reason I sound like this is because it saddens me to think that people are drawn into this den of deception. Categories dis 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 dissolve, especially fundamental ones. The culture is dissolving because the culture is a structure of category. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Right. So, and in fact, culture is a stra culture is a structure of category that we all share. So we see things the same way. Well, that's why we can talk. I mean, not exactly the same way, because then we'd have nothing to talk about, but. Could you ever imagine that this is supposed to be a conversation about God's word? 
Anyway, let me rewind back and see where we left off. But they're void of any actual talk of the word. And to be clear, when I say the word, lowercase w-o-r-d, I'm talking about the scripture, talking about the Bible. And when I say the word, capital W-O-R-D, I'm talking about Yeshua, our Lord Christ Jesus, the word made flesh. John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. You know, this is only my personal opinion, but I believe that all things in this material and physical world can be made an idol. But if we hold up the word made flesh, we can never go wrong, no matter what happens in this fallen and material world. So let's get down to the heart of the matter today. Test everything. Don't even trust me, but test me. Who am I or that man next to you, but people claiming to know the will of God? And God's word comes to us in various ways, basically in the physical Bible, or by the Holy Spirit. It may be in the form of a dream or through prophetic word. It could be meant for you or meant for another. But one thing we can never forget, test it. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. So when a man comes to me, claiming anything is from God, I test it. If we as a community come bearing new knowledge of a thing no matter how convincing we are test us it should line up with God's plans and his word and his will and if you see me or any man or group hesitant to test anything you have to pause if my character or attitude or love or logic if my reasoning or my preaching stop in lining up with God's word or his plans, you have to pause. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. What exactly am I talking about? And while I do clearly see what looks like an issue, for some reason I feel moved to pause. And I can see God's word on both sides of this issue. But we need to test it and be sure it's the perfect will of God. Because when I look at a community and at the nature of many surrounding this topic and the often reckless abandon which some conduct themselves on this issue, I have to pause. I'm not saying that this isn't a matter for concern, but when I see a hesitance to provide open and full disclosure, I have to pause. When I call for meetings and prayer and new eyes to take a look and I get resistance at all, I have to pause. If I ask someone outspoken on the topic for the verses in God's word that support this issue and they can't help me, I have to pause. Why? Because no matter what I think or believe, no matter what my eyes think they see, it has to line up with God's perfect will first. And let no man tell you they've tested it already. Test it again and find that it is in agreement with the perfect and righteous will and plans of our Heavenly Father. Yeah, I know. I still haven't even mentioned what the issue is. But to those who know me, they know what the issue is. And to those that have no idea, just understand that the lesson that I explained today applies to everything and every issue. I mean, there's a reason that I haven't made a video on this topic because I need to be sure that this is well tested. And this may not be for every year at this time. And I'm a patient man, and I wanna wait on the move of God. So here's my plan going forward. And this can apply to any issue or any problem or situation that the community's having. Imagine for a moment, I know this may sound wild and illogical, but what if we pray on this and yeah I know some will say uh, we've been there we've done that we've prayed and I say pray more and here's a crazy idea what if while praying and fasting and being in the word we trust God 
and just be patient now. We all know full well that God will move. We all know full well that God will provide direction. And I mean, at the end of the day, is anything going to happen that is not part of his perfect will and plan?